everyone. Uh, welcome to our workshop. This is uh, <clears throat> almost like a part two of the previous workshop that Lynn did. Um, Lynn's workshop was more on you know, how to install Istio and how to use Istio, whereas this one is going to slightly take a different angle and, and focus more on like the SRE role of how to deploy Istio for production, um, how to use production components, not just the stuff that comes out of the box as samples, and then um, some debugging tools so that as an SRE or like in your production environment when something goes wrong, how can you debug exactly what's happening without knowing too much about the application itself, but just being able to introspect the network. Um, you, I think everyone here has been in the previous lab. Um, if you haven't, you know, go to play.instruct.com and make an account. And then a um, little bit about me. I'm a, also a field engineer at Solo. Um, I work with our customers to make sure that they're happy in their adoption of Kubernetes, Envoy, Istio, Service Mesh, you know, whatever the technologies. So we're kind of solution architects, developer advocates, customer support engineers. We kind of do it all. And we're hiring. Um, I think you've heard a pitch about Solo a couple of times already, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, the two main products that we have are Glue Mesh, which is our enterprise Istio, and then Glue Edge, which is our enterprise Envoy that sits at the edge. And then with Glue Mesh, we also have a gateway solution that brings in all of the API gateway functionality to the Istio Ingress gateway. Uh, we have various other sessions uh, in the day. Uh, I think we're like halfway through the day, so. The, the other session that we have is multi-cluster service mesh later on in the day at 3.30 p.m. that another field engineer from Solo will be running. And uh, it'll be in here. I'll be moderating in here like, like I did this morning. Okay. Again, we're going to be using the Instruct platform. The, the link to this workshop is at the bottom of my screen. Um, Eric will also share this in Service MeshCon Slack channel. Um, it should also be, be available on the main uh, CNCF, uh, the session page. Um, can I get like you know a thumbs up that most people are able to access this? Cool. I'm still going to wait probably a, a minute or so so that the people on uh, that are joining in virtually are able to access this. Cool. So once you, once you click this link, you'll see the track. You basically add it to your study room, and then you start it. And then once you start it, it sets up the environment. It sets up your Kubernetes cluster. So that process takes about a couple minutes. So while that's running, uh, I'm going to kind of move forward. So the people in the room are experts and instruct now. So this should go much more smoothly. The first portion of our lab, um, we're going to put Istio aside for a while and understand Envoy a little bit better. Um, and this is important so that when things are not working well, you're able to see what Istio did to Envoy to achieve the, the functionality, whether it's you know, traffic routing or MTLS or uh, request transformation. The Istio's API, all it's doing is it's converting your simple Istio API to thousands of lines of Envoy configuration, and then pushing it to all the various pods. And then it can scope it down. Um, it can export it to the right namespaces, et cetera. So it knows what pods need to talk to what pods, so it's able to program each Envoy intelligently. It's a control plane. So let's do that. So, th so this lab, all we're going to do, we're going to deploy the sleep sample, an HTTP bin sample, so two different apps. Um, we're going to go to HTTP bin, bin directly, and then we're going to on, install Envoy, and then go through Envoy to reach HTTP bin to kind of see the difference. OK, so with that, um, everybody should be like on a page like this, right? On running an Envoy server. Then I'll click Start. OK. So let's see if you're able to see the screen OK. I'm going to go full screen and then zoom in. Can I get a thumbs up that everything looks, looks good on the screen? OK, cool. First part, we're just going to install the HTTP bin and sleep YAML. Um, you can just click 
in this box, and it does the copy for you. Just a quick shortcut. So, um, you know, if you click in this uh, the code box, then it'll copy it, and then you paste it in the terminal window. So it deploys the HTTP bin app, and then it deploys the sleep app. So once that's done, give it a couple of seconds, and then the next command will exec into the sleep container, and then call your HTTP bin container, and it's going to call slash headers. So then HTTP bin will respond back basically whatever headers that you passed it, and anything else that it adds. So you know, pretty straightforward. There's really nothing there. Um, it's saying that you called me from curl. This is the host that you called me on, and, and nothing else. So next, let's deploy Envoy. Um, Envoy reads its configuration from multiple ways. You can statically declare it using this Envoy conf YAML that we're going to show, or you can also program it dynamically using its XTS API. But for now, let's just look at you know a static definition. Um, so this is so if I open up, if I do a cat on Envoy conf YAML that that already exists in this in this environment. Uh, we can see some admin configuration is showing that you know you know where to save the access log, what port the admin port is listening on, and then the static resources is the config is all the config that you need to tell Envoy if you receive traffic on this port, I want you to to direct you know do whatever Envoy things you have to do, and then direct traffic to your the HTTP bin app. So what we're trying to do is use Envoy as a proxy. So this is just saying that I want to create an HTTP filter. Um, and then this is my route config over here. I want to listen on all domains, all prefix for, for your route matching. And then I want to send it to this HTTP bin service cluster. Cluster in Envoy terminology is basically like a set of endpoints. These are your destinations that, that Envoy will, will direct traffic to. And then that cluster is defined on the bottom. So it's going to define that HTTP bin service that you see up here, um, down here. OK, so that's my very simple Envoy config. That's about you know, as simple as it gets. So then let's create a config map out of that configuration, apply that config map to my Kubernetes cluster, and then deploy Envoy proxy. So it's going to be another pod, another container. So now you have three containers. HTTP bin, sleep, and Envoy. When you ran your exec command before, we exec into sleep and went directly to HTTP bin. But now we're going to exec into sleep, but instead of going to HTTP bin, we're going to call Envoy. And then we're going to do slash headers, but we've configured Envoy to direct all traffic to HTTP bin. So let's do that. So now we have a couple of additional um, headers. You can see the host Envoy. So that means that you know, Envoy is, the, is your proxy that, accept, that, request, that received this curl command and then forwarded it on to the HTTP bin service. Uh, you can also see this X Envoy expected um, timeout. Um, so the timeout configuration that we defined in our Envoy config, you can kind of also see here for the clients to use. Everybody good? Cool. So now let's change the Envoy configuration and change the call timeout. Um, so if I look at this config again, um, before we didn't specify a timeout, but over here now we're going to specify a one second timeout. So again, let's create that config map or you know, update that config map. And then we're going to restart Envoy to pick up these changes, and the change being the timeout of one second. Give that a couple of seconds for it to restart. And now you can always run like kubectl get pods and, and, and see the three pods. You can see Envoy started. So now if we do the exec command again to do the curl to Envoy, you can see that the timeout's updated to one second, 1,000 milliseconds. HTTP bin app has an endpoint where you can um, tell it to have a delay before responding. 
So if you go to slash delay slash five, then it's going to wait five seconds before responding. Well, we've configured Envoy to time out after one second. So as you would expect, uh, the connection should fail. So you can see now we have a H504 um, gateway timeout. Pretty straightforward. Um, when things are not working well, Envoy exposes uh, the stats endpoint as well as other endpoints that we'll get to. But for now, we're going to look at the stats endpoint where you can get statistics about you know what what's going on in the um, what, what's going on with all the requests. So <clears throat> let's exec again from sleep. But now we're going to call Envoy's um, admin port admin port that fifteen thousand um, and then slash stats. So now we're not going to HTTP bin. We're just going to the admin port of Envoy and then went to the slash stats endpoint. Then we see a lot of good information, right? Um, so this, all kinds of stuff in here, uh, you know, the, the, the way it's, it's configured, all, all of its various clusters that, it, that Envoy knows about, and, you know, all the 500s, all the retries, all kinds of goodies are in here. So let's run that same command again, except this time we'll just grep for the retry word so that we get a smaller list. So you can see that all the retries are set to zero. So that means Envoy is not really haven't, hasn't really retried any request. Next thing we'll do is we'll configure Envoy to retry a request on, say, 500s. So again, we have an Envoy config YAML. We will, upload, we will take a look at that. And this one is saying, here, I'm going to add the retry policy, retry on, on any type of 500s, like 501, 501, 502, 503, 5XX, and retry it three times. Okay, like, just like before, apply the config map, and then restart Envoy. Give it a couple of seconds, and that HTTP bin app also has a slash status slash 500 endpoint. If you if you call slash status slash 500, it's going to reply back with a 500. If you call slash 502, it replies back. So it's just like a basically like an echo. So so you can do various tests. So if you do the slash 500, it comes back with a 500. Okay, that's as, that's as expected. You can see HTTP 101 500 internal server error. But we want to see more details about, about this 500, right? So um, let's use the stats endpoint with the grep for retry and see what's going on. So now we see, if you look closely, that this cluster HTTP bin service has a retry label with a value set to three. That means that. Envoy tried to hit this endpoint three times and it failed. So good stuff there. Um, that's very useful um, you know, in production when you're, you're seeing if your retry policies are applying. So you can see if, the app, if, if your app is really down or if it's just you know, taking you know, a couple of times to respond. Uh, if everything is working well and you periodically check the stats endpoint and you see various retries, that might be a sign for you to figure out, like, hey, what's going on? Why am I getting retries once in a while? It's good that Istio is able to mask this by applying these retry policies, but you still want to kind of know that this is happening once in a while. So that's Envoy for you. Um, very simple, basic configuration if you were to program Envoy yourself. Cool? All right. So once you're done with that lab, click on um, check at the bottom. It just you know, does, does a quick check to make sure that you've done all the required pieces before you move on. Can I get a thumbs up in the room that everything's good? Cool. Um, Eric, everything's going good online? Awesome. The next, the next lab, um, we're actually going to install Istio. Uh, we're going to install Istio using revisions. Revisions let you specify a version of Istio to deploy into your cluster. That helps you when you want to do upgrades so that you can have Istio 183 installed into your cluster, and then you can have Istio 195 also installed in the same cluster, and you can tell your pods you know, which Istio 
do you want to use? And you can do slowly incremental upgrades. So for that reason, revisions are extremely important, especially in production, where you don't want to impact any traffic, um, and you want to do gradual rollouts of any changes. So we have uh, the namespaces at the top are default, Istio and system, sorry, default Istio and action namespace, as well as the Istio system namespace. Uh, in the default namespace, we have the HTTP bin app that should already be there. We're going to create this new namespace, Istio and action, and deploy this, um, the, the same app you, you ran in the previous lab. It's got four microservices, web, recommend, purchase, and sleep. And then in the Istio system namespace, this is where we're going to deploy our Istio. Question? Uh, we're not using the operator here. Would you recommend this approach over Amper? Uh, yes. The number one recommended way of installing Istio is to use Istio Cuddle. Um, so Istio Cuddle manifest apply, or you know manifest generate look at the YAML and apply. Um, I would say the the second best approach if you're installing brand new Istios moving forward. Uh, the Helm support is getting better and better. Right now, it's, it's in alpha, but I believe in the next version, we're, the alpha label is going to go away, and Helm 3 will be, will be supported. And then the Istio operator, it, it works well. I mean, it's been uh, a supported way of installing Istio for a while, but the community is moving um, slightly away from it because the value of the Istio operator uh, is not as as big as it once was. Before, uh, like last year, you know, Ist Istio came with like multiple components. But now, you know, Istio is kind of shrinking down into just the single monolithic Istio D. And then the gateway portion of Istio is becoming more of a user, um, user's responsibility because they're installing the gateways into their own um, namespaces for, for better delineation of, of security, traffic, and administrative domains. So for that reason, because there's kind of only one pod or like you know one deployment Istio D, the, there's really like not that much use of having this overhead of an in cluster operator running. You're still going to use the Istio operator API. You just give it to Istio Cuddle, and then Istio Cuddle will take that Istio operator API, convert it to all your Kubernetes YAML, and deploy it to your uh, to your cluster. Okay, back to our lab. Like I said, let's first start with deploying our sample application. First, create the Istio in action namespace, and then deploy those microservices, the sample application microservices. This installs the, the deployments, the services, service accounts, et cetera. And then do a get pods so that you can kind of see it come up. Might take uh, 30 seconds or so for these containers to pop up. So those my my pods are up, and now let's download Istio. Uh, this lab uses Istio 183. Um, the, con the concepts are the same for 19, 110, 111. Yeah, this curl command just sets the Istio version and then goes and downloads the binaries uh, for Istio Cuddle. Once it's downloaded, we'll set the path so that we can type Istio Cuddle and have it point it at the right Istio. And then once that's done, um, you should be able to run Istio Cuddle version and then see the version output. Normally, when you run Istio Cuddle version and it's and you, your cube config is pointed at a cluster that has Istio installed, then it's able to go query that cluster to see what version you have installed. Um, because we don't have Istio installed yet, that's why it says no Istio pods in Istio system namespace. But then the 183 on the bottom is the version of the CLI. Uh, like, like we talked about, there's three ways of installing Istio, Istio Cuddle CLI, um, Istio Operator, and Helm. 
uh, with, the, with the current support, I would say that this is a good ordered list. And, but in the future, I think what the Helm is going to take over Istio operator. Great. And then um, let's kind of proceed. Uh, we're kind of running short on time. We're slow, going a little slower than I expected. But you know, we're going to create the Istio system namespace. We're going to create this um, Istio D service. This is kind of a workaround for a bug that's been there uh, in Istio for a while, where if you want to do Istio revisions, but you're starting on a fresh cluster, then you need the Istio D service created for the gateways to communicate with. So this is a, this section where you're applying the Istio D service is a workaround. But this is also documented on the Istio installation, revision installation page. And then finally, the, the Istio profile that we're going to install is minimal, meaning the only thing you'll get is Istio D. So that's what's uh, defined here in this Istio operator. In production, you should always have an Istio operator file. Have multiple Istio operator files, one for your Istio D, and then you know, one for each one of the gateways you have defined. So take advantage of multiple Istio operator files. Save these operator files in your source control. And then when you install Istio, um, you would do Istio cuddle install and then point it at that, that Istio operator file. And then you would specify your revision label being 1-8-3. Um, many users also do like Istio cuddle install, and then you can pass it every single flag that you want to overwrite directly with that, with that CLI, but um, <clears throat> that's more error prone. So take advantage of actually storing your config in this Istio operator um, resource. With the Istio cuddle method, you're not applying the file to your Kubernetes cluster. You're just passing it to your CLI. Your CLI does all the magic and installs it. Let's take a look at the pods that we have set up. And you can see the only thing that got installed is Istio D, and, but it's actually named with the revision that you passed it. So now you can kind of get hints at you know, how, you, how you can have multiple Istio Ds running, because they would all have a different name. They would all have a different service. To make sure that Istio D is working OK, you can exec into Istio D itself and then it has this pilot discovery binary inside of it. And that, pilot, that binary exposes all kinds of various subcommands that you can use to like, figure out what services that your Istio D um, has discovered. So this one um, is just calling the, the registry endpoint. So this is, you're basically asking Istio's D service registry to list all the services that it knows about. Um, this one will have both services that are part of the mesh as well as not part of the mesh. It knows all, this, all the services because it talks to the Kubernetes API. The output is pretty verbose, but you, know, you can take a look at it in your own time. Next thing we'll do is we're going to add a sidecar to the HTTP bin service. So you might be familiar with just labeling your Istio system names, your labeling your workload namespace, and then restarting your workloads, and then using the um, the webhook to, to inject the sidecar for you automatically. But if you're trying to do a more methodical step-by-step -step approach of injecting one pod at a time to make sure things are working properly, and you want to take advantage of revisions to point it at the injector that is version 1.8.3, then you can use this method of, of specifying, using Istio Cuddle to specify the, your config map that you want to use. So I want to use the mesh config map 183, and you can specify the injector that you want to use. So this allows you to be very specific in, this, in what sidecar you're getting. If you have 10 versions of Istio running in your cluster, you can say that I want to deploy this pod, and this pod I want to have the 183 sidecar. OK, that's the end of that lab. So now we have the HTTP bin service. So if you do kubectl get pods, you can see that HTTP bin has two of two. The two obviously be meaning one is your HTTP bin container, and then the second container is the Istio proxy container. All good? Cool. 
All right, moving right along now. The third portion we want to cover is observability. Um, out of the box, Istio comes with, um, actually, how am I doing on time? Do you know when this, um, hey, Will or Eric, do you know when this part one ends? How much? 15. 15, cool. Yep, we'll be able to get through this. The observability lab focuses on not using the sample observability add-ons that come with Istio. Um, the, the Prometheus deployment, the Kiali, that come with Istio, like you know, if, you, if you follow, the, uh, they used to come with Istio itself, but now we've broken it apart in the documentation. There's a separate section for observability, and, and that lets you get up to speed quickly by using basically just shortcuts to, to deploy Prometheus and apply the config maps and everything. But in a more production environment, you might have um, a full-fledged Prometheus installed using like the Prometheus operator and then using uh, resources like pod monitors and service monitors to, to scrape metrics. So that's what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna set up uh, a more enterprise Prometheus. We're gonna use the Prometheus operator. We're gonna use the Kiali operator and then making sure that they're secured properly and they're configured properly. So skipping or moving on to lab three. Okay, first we're gonna install Prometheus. Step one, create the Prometheus namespace. Then we're gonna download the Prometheus um, Helm charts. Then we're gonna use Helm to install Prometheus. When you're copying and pasting these commands, remember you have to hit enter after you do the paste. Sometimes if it's multiple lines, then you know everything except the last one gets entered. So then, so be, just be careful with that. So now we're running the Helm installer. Um, you know we've, we've configured this so that it works well with Istio. And then once that's done, um, do the kubectl get pods in the Prometheus namespace. So you can see these various uh, components starting up. Cool. So run that get pods a couple of times until everything is running. And then we should be able to port forward to the, your, uh, your Prometheus service. And then the way the port forwarding works in this instruct environments is that we already have these tabs configured um, to to, to listen to that port, that localhost 9090 port. Uh, so if you click on this Prometheus tab, you can see that it now loads. If you were to click this before doing a port forward, you would have a blank screen. Actually, one step that I missed is that um, there are multiple terminals. There's terminal tab one and then terminal tab two. Uh, we want you to do the the port forwarding in tab two so that you're not blocked and you can continue on with in your tab one. So if you, if you did the port forward in terminal one, do a control C, break out of it, go to terminal two and run the port forward. And then if you should still be able to get to this Prometheus page. Um, you can you know, start typing in expressions in here, but it, it doesn't have any stats yet. So uh, Prometheus is not configured to scrape any control plane or Istio plane pod. So, um, so, you know, executing any queries won't give you anything. Next, um, go back to Terminal 2, exit out of it, and then also um, port forward to the Grafana service. And then if you go to Grafana, you should see this page load. And then the, the credentials are, are in the chat. Sorry, the credentials are in the workshop. So you should see something like this. So if I go to um, 
go to home in the dashboards, you can see I don't have any dashboards yet. So let's fix that. Let's add the Istio dashboards to, to Grafana. The, the Istio sample Grafana deployment comes with Grafana as well as a bunch of um, pre-configured dashboards. So we can take that and apply those grad dashboards to our, our, dash, our Grafana instance. Um, we've already downloaded all those dashboards to, to the local file system. So you should be able to just create a config map out of it by specifying all of the files. I don't think it matters which terminal you run these in. So we've created a config map using all of the dashboards that are on file. Next, um, we're going to label the config map so that Grafana will pick it up. And then do a port forward to Prometheus again. Sorry, port forward to Grafana again. And now if you go back to Grafana, and then there should be a refresh on the top right. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit that refresh just to make sure it picks and reloads properly. And then if I now go to home, you can see I have all of my Istio dashboards loaded. So if you click on, let's say, the Istio control plane dashboard, you can see that the dashboard's configured. We just don't have any stats yet. And that's because we need to tell, we need to configure Prometheus scraping to scrape our control plane as well as the data plane metrics. So we'll leave that port forwarding on terminal two. So let that, you know, let that port forward for Grafana run in terminal two. But then move over to terminal one and then start uh, looking at the Prometheus um, service monitor resource so you can um, take a look to see you know, how it's configured to, to read the control plane metrics. Now, once you take a look at those metrics or you know, how it's using, how it's determining you know, what service it's trying to scrape, and any you know, modifications it wants to do. It looks like for this one, there's none. And then apply that. It says you should be able to go to Grafana UI and start seeing data. But um, in my experience, it usually takes a couple of minutes for, for, for the scraping to start picking up new metrics. So while that's happening, let's just keep going down and then apply the the pod monitor, the pod scraping, your workload metrics um, as well. So once you applied both the service monitor and the pod monitor YAMLs, go down and then simulate some load by running this for loop. So for 10 times, it's going to do, it's going to exec into the sleep container and then it's going to call the HTTP bin container. Remember that your HTTP bin container is now part of the mesh, but sleep is not. Looks like my control plane dashboard is now picking up metrics. See, there's a you know, few lines here and there. And if I go back here and where am I? And then go to the Istio, let's see, service dashboard. couple of seconds, I should be able to see 
metrics for my HTTP bin app as well. Not yet. Like I said before, this usually like takes a few minutes. We'll come back to this probably in a in a later section so that you can you can see better metrics. But you can see that the the control plane metrics are picked up. The service metrics are taking a little while longer. So with that, um, hit check on the bottom. And well, we're not quite done yet. Ah, Kiali. I forgot about installing Kiali. So Grafana and Prometheus are good for, for you to see how every single service is doing, the health of every single service, you know, the number of 500s that they're getting, the response times, et cetera. And Kiali, on the other hand, is a, is a service graph. So it's good for observing traffic as it's flowing through the system. So it knows about all the various services and how they're connecting together, and it determines that based on the Prometheus metrics. So let's go ahead and install Kiali. First, we'll create the Kiali operator namespace, and then do a Helm install. If you check the pods, and wait for the Kiali operator part to start up. And then, you know, just like with Istio, you're defining the config in the Istio operator YAML. Um, Kiali, you can define Kiali configuration using this, this Kiali resource. So let's apply, let's create that as well. And then if you list the pods in the Istio system namespace, in a couple of seconds, we should see the Kiali pod come up as well. Um, this Zoom stopped. OK. Is Kiali learning? Looks like Kiali's taking a little while to start up. But basically, you know, you, same thing as Prometheus and in Grafana, you know, you install the components and then you port forward to it. Uh, this is taking a little while. So what I'm going to do is just apply all of the Kiali commands so that we can move to the next section. We have a lot of things to cover, and I don't want to spend all of our time on observability. <clears throat>